hair, hair. Um, give it a second. Wait till I see a number pop up on the screen. Hey everybody, happy Friday. It's John coming to you from a studio. I wouldn't say the studio. The studio is a little more concrete that I'm working on something. It's the studio right now. Uh, no, it's a studio. Can I start it again? No, it's live? Okay. Anyway, I've got the PRS Silver Sky, the stuff of recent uh, conversation uh, and discussion and thought that I would play it for you and let you hear it and tell you some of my ideas behind it, why it is what it is, um, how I see sort of the future of it, and let you guys ask some questions about it. Um, I've got the red one. Um, because I just sort of got attached to this one. Uh, so, uh, I guess I should play a little bit of it. I'll start on the, ne on the neck pickup, and this is clean. And now, I want you to know I'm not going through impossible to find stuff. Most of what you're gonna hear is a Fender Deluxe and a little bit of the PRS, J-Mod uh, going together and... <laughs> If you put a little extra There's what we call the tubbiness and I actually think that it beats uh, The fender stuff at by the way Let's say the word fender. I it's a, a, the first thing I want you to understand is that um, I embrace the fender thing. I've seen people actually like kind of disregard the fender thing where they should regard it like i want to as a customer like at heart i want to see people play the silver sky through a fender amp because that's what makes the sound you know so i was watching someone play through like a victory amp and i'm going like well just just play through a fender and and, and that's the first thing i want to say is that the, this guitar is made to coexist with Fender amplifiers, with Fender guitars, with Gibson guitars, with any other guitar out there in the world. It's not trying to revise history. It's just a new way forward, to, um, to quote George Bush. Um, so, and, that, and that's, that's who you wanna quote when you're, never mind. Anyway, uh, that's the neck uh, pickup, which gives me like, um, it, you know. <laughs> neck pickup has beautiful high end so it's got that harmonic overtone thing that that I love you hear it in like Freddie King stuff you definitely hear it in Stevie stuff and um, and now I'm gonna show you the bridge pickup which actually has bottom end in it which is really interesting and a little uh, take on BB King stuff for a minute uh, I believe there's some revisionist history with his tone where people are always rolling off the tone knob and they're playing this really uh, sort of bottom heavy tone thing on the neck but a lot of that BB stuff that early BB stuff especially like live at the Regal is is not rolled off it's you know it's a guitar uh, Paul didn't make me a special one this is a production line guitar and um, the other thing I wanted to get to because I heard myself <laughs> say about the tone knob so here's here's what I want to show you on the tone knob here most guitars most strats even have 
this tone knob it's sort of um only really has like three settings you might you, you could also just put it on a clicker you know it's kind of wide open rolled off and then like unusably dark you know um and these controls are really really nuanced this almost got a studio gear thing to it so for instance i'll go back to the neck pickup now the two and the four hum canceling these you're on your own um also guitar players know that the sound of 60 cycle hum is just like the sound of someone breathing but um you know when you're up i'll stay on this person it's quiet enough when you're on 10, you get this extra treble kick. And when you turn down to 9, you lose a little high end. But what you can stay at 10, I don't know if you can hear that on the phone, but if you go down to 7, that's a usable tone. So I'll play... It's almost like a filter. So the other thing is that on my old Strat, when I would get one, I would turn the tone knobs down to five because from five to ten had a frequency in there that just I didn't, I wasn't a fan of. And I went so far as to like at some point ask about, which never happened, putting like a detent switch in um, into the knob so it would sync at five because I wanted that to be sort of the starting range because there was so much extra sort of high end harmonic stuff that I didn't like. And so that's out. So at 10, it's a, it might be a little extra trouble than you need in certain situations, but it's not this sort of unusable, kind of unattractive tremolo, um, treble stuff. So it's got that warmer thing for me that I really like. Um, you know some of the specs, so I won't have to go through them, but this is wired to the, to the bridge, and um, this, is, this does uh, the neck and the middle. Uh, the middle's really great, too, and I wasn't a middle guy for a long time, but It's kind of that Jerry thing, you know. <laughs> so that's the middle. Um, now the in-betweens. Now, really quickly, a lot of guitar players are going to want to know do the slow dancing thing, because that's the test, uh, the modern day test of a neck middle uh, out of phase pickup selection is slow dancing in a bringing room. pulls of overtone high end that just sort of hits you in the ear. It's actually a very musical high end that has low end in it. The high end has low end and the low end has high end. Um, so that's that. Also, you can get that quack on your middle bridge and go. You know, it's got that.
that thing. Um, so that's really the sound of the guitar. Um, <clears throat> it's sort of a higher definition strat to me. And I wanted to go in and take out um, a lot of those frequencies that uh, you sort of have to work to roll off. They're not there. They're just gone. So they're tuned a different way. Um, and sort of going into the guitar, and this is a part of a larger conversation, but going into a guitar that's been around for 60 years and going, well, what's, what still is valid and what's still vital and, and what can you sort of go in and modify? And Paul Reed Smith and I went in and now our saying was sort of this, you take a hundred guitar, you take a hundred strats and two or three of them are magic. The question is what makes those magic and how do you replicate that so that you get a hundred out of a hundred guitars that are magic? This has a lot to do with like taking what my favorite 64 strat is taking the overall sensibility of that and the tone of that and giving it to people so that it becomes not something that's impossible to get for most people. I just, I love the idea of bringing it down to a place of accessibility for people. And I think to a certain extent that's really happened. Like everyone I've played, I go, there you go, there it is. And that's Paul's thing. Paul is a scientist as much as he is an artist, he's a scientist. And um, so there you go. Now, it's time to myth bust. You ready to come along and play uh, myth busting with me? Number one, I do not have an endorsement the way that Tiger Woods would have an endorsement with Nike. I didn't get money for working with Paul. That's not how it works. It's not like Paul went, we'll give you this much money. I had an idea for a guitar and this goes back about 10 years. A guitar that is sort of the future of the classic design. It was not going to work at Fender. They weren't gonna be able, one way or another, to bring the vision that I had to life, okay? So, not pissed off. I wanna go to somewhere where they can bring the vision to life. And it made a lot of sense to go to Paul because that's the guy who started the company. To be able to call the guy who started the company on the phone and talk directly about ideas and how to build them, that's good for you. The, you know, that's good for anybody watching, like that's good to have an artist be able to call the guy who runs the company. I couldn't do that really at Fender because of a, reasons that they're, it's musical chairs. I'm not talking shit, I never talked shit. It's just musical chairs. You don't know who to call. I get to call the guy whose name is on the guitar and we get to build stuff together. That's too cool. And that's something that I appreciate and that's something that anybody picking up this guitar or any other guitar in the future should appreciate because it opens up the direct connection between the artist and the guy who designs the guitars. Who's, who, the guy who's still here, who's who can very directly make change happen with the guitar. Okay, so let's get into the guitar. Why did it take two years? That's people, it's striking a lot of people as sort of a, a, a farce that it took two years. Well, it's a game of inches when you deal, in millimeters, when you deal with taking a, t a guitar that is based off of the Strat. Again, this guitar is based off of the Strat. And I think if people understood that I'm admitting that, I'm saying, yes, I have played a Strat for such a long time in my career that it didn't make sense to me personally to look down and see a different shape. And I don't think other people would wanna look and see a different shape. So here's the three places that you have to sort of stick in between. You wanna remain classic to a design that's almost synonymous with electric guitar. You want to innovate in a certain way so that you see something new and you also want to respect the language of design that PRS guitars have. So everything has to balance. This is all a game of balance. It's, it's two years because of balance. So let's go into why you have to balance this stuff. Well, I didn't just go to Paul and say, I have this idea, make it for me or I'll go somewhere else. It was so much discussion. 
Guitar players know that you've got to lean your guitar up against the couch or the bed and be able to look at it from across the room and go, yeah, all right. There's a confluence of design that makes something, when every detail is right, you look at it and it becomes one thing. It's not just six tuners and six machine heads and one nut and you know 21 frets. It becomes one really great thing. Cars have it, art has it, you know. Certain Apple products, Leica cameras, you look at it and they become sort of objects of sort of visual kind of lust, you know. So that was the thing is we have to get the sound to feel, to sound the right way, the feel to be the right way. And it's got to, you got to turn around after you put it in the stand and go, there we go. Okay, so is it a Strat with a PRS headstock? Well, it's not, and I'll tell you why. And I'm not saying this defensively, I think you might find this interesting. When you take this much meat out of the fender pick guard shape, it throws the whole thing off. So as soon as you cut that, and I ask any, go for it. And by the way, go in Photoshop and just put a PRS headstock on a Strat and tell me how you like it. So you've got, you're missing all this stuff now. And now you have to offset that with, with the right thing. Now, let me show you something that's really cool. This thing, this curve here always, it, it always looked old to me, you know? So part of this is what would a guitar like this look like if it were made this year for the first time? I, I'm not sure that there would be a sunburst option. Like I think in 2018, if, if, if the electric guitar had just come into prominence, you wouldn't see a sunburst. And that's why there's no sunburst in the first line uh, of these guitars is that I'm trying to look at this like, if, the, if this guitar was made for the first time, this type of guitar was made for the first time in 2018, would they offer a sunburst? I don't know, and, and I'm looking at it like, I don't, I just don't, I don't see sunburst on other things. Back in 1954, you saw sunburst on radios, televisions, cabinets. It's just not in the nomenclature. But what is are Tesla colors, and this is actually the red from the red they offer for Tesla. And that's in keeping with the modernized take on what a six-string electric guitar would borrow from in 2018 if it had just started. So, you lose this, and you have to redesign this, because this now, so look at this. I, it took forever to figure out, when this was straight, now if you look at a Strat, the pickguard goes straight through in a line. The last thing we did to this before it was done, before I looked at it and said it's done, is that this had to curve. Technically, it doesn't make sense that it's not straight through, but if you had this sharpness here and this sharpness here, I mean, respect to Gene Simmons, but it looks like Gene Simmons. With, with the paint, with, with the paint. I love you, Gene Simmons, but that's what I'm saying. So, you also have this thing right here. And while we were looking at it going, how do you make this thing work? I went, oh, if you really wanna balance it, make this the shape of this. So when you look at it and you go, wow, I like that for some reason, this is the mirror image of that. And that's what balances this out. Because this is a tall order when you change it. Okay, so why is it a three and three on a Strat body. And I think that that's Strat shape body, Paul. Um, I think that's why um, it's giving a lot of people pause, is that it's three and three. Now, here's a fun story. When we started endeavoring on this guitar, we went out to the greatest industrial designers in the world. And they went on deep dives into the history of the headstock and all the different shapes and what based on all the different influences and all the different references, a, a headstock would look like today if it had six in a line, none of them worked. You would have looked at it and went, that's disgusting. And it was, but we tried. And one day maybe Paul will let me show you the things and you look at it and go, oh, got it, wow, six in a line. So trying to get a fender looking headstock without being exactly a fender headstock is a daredevil situation on a design level. 99.9999% um, uh, of those headstocks don't look right. So then I went, okay, let's go three and three and let's use the PRS DNA. So what's interesting is that this point and this point right here are the same on my hand as my 64. So I, I'm very familiar with that. 
The reason it's reverse as a headstock, and I remember the day I reversed it in Photoshop and sent it to Paul and Bev, Beverly Fowler, who's amazing at PRS, is a artist, she runs the artist's relations, is because you have this point up here. If you had this point, this ends here and this ends here, and this was up here and this was down here, you'd have a whole top heavy guitar. Everything would be like this and everything on this side would be short. So true to the old kind of vintage Fender thing, it would be elongated the most here. To, and now that's a design thing you can't get away from. Every, the balance is, this is taller, this is shorter, so this has to be taller and this has to be shorter. And that all of a sudden balanced it out. That's when I looked at it and went, oh, this doesn't look like a platypus's foot or something. You know, it just wasn't looking like it had the thing. So we go with the mini birds. That's another thing I wanted to be true to Paul's vision, you know, Paul's DNA. The bird thing is a genius uh, design thing for the last 30 years, you know. Okay, so we get into the bridge. Bridge is pretty much blocked. Uh, it's the same effect you'd get of it being blocked, but it's just the, the springs are really tight. You get it, you take a spring off, you, you can loosen up the springs, you put a thing in and you're, 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 you're off and running. Um, let's get to the radius. Why is it a nine? Why is it a seven and a quarter radius? Um, all the guitars I love that are from the 60s, and I've got a bunch of 64 strats. All the ones that I pick up and do, you know, that it sort of fits in my hand, they happen to be seven and a quarter. Why do I say happen to be seven and a quarter? Because I have never thought about neck radius. I believe most guitar players don't think about neck radius when they're playing. Neck radius is kind of a, uh, a very hardcore, um, empirical, mathematical take on the shape of a neck. I don't know any guitar players that I run with who talk about neck radius, who look at a guitar and go, and I, and I don't even know if you guys ever say like, looking for a guitar, I want something that's got really hot output and, and, I, and it's, gotta have a, it's gotta have a nine and a half radius. I just, it's not in the discussion. Where you do talk about a radius is you play a guitar you like and you go, huh, what's the neck radius on that? Because I, I'm just not sure that anybody could tell from playing it. I know that I couldn't. I played a long time. If you put something in my hand and I played it and I went, what is that? Is that, an, is that a nine and a half? You'd be like, it's a 12. I'd be like, oh, son of a gun. Because there's so many other elements to it. And in this case, the frets are done so well that it really uh, knocks out a certain uh, portion of the conversation of, oh no, you're not gonna be able to bend strings on it. So if you feel like you have a preference for a radius, I get it. If you go, look, whenever I pick up a guitar and I love it, it's a seven and a quarter. Or you go, I can't get down with seven and a quarter personally because I play it and some, I get it. But the idea of just sort of adopting a point of view because it's a thing, you go, yeah, seven and a quarter, that's for cording and nine and a half, that's for soloing. You see the same thing in like photography. Photography and guitars are very similar, right? Because you can get into the the material aspect of it, or you can or and or you can get into the sort of metaphysical aspect of how you use it and what you're using it for. And you'll hear people say in photography circles, "Oh, 50 millimeter, that's for portrait. 35 millimeter, that's for like journalism." I have taken great portraits on a 35 millimeter, and I have taken awesome shots of landscape on a 50 millimeter lens. So. It's just not true. I hate to say it this way, but it's just not true. The idea that seven and a quarter is for cording and nine and a half is for soloing. It's just not true. I picked up guitars that I loved and they were 12. Okay, picked up guitars I love and they were compound neck radius. So um, that's how I feel about the radius issue. Uh, when the frets are done right, That's
chord is really good for is so no, that's got a little too much high end so Questions? I know that sounds uh, obnoxious and sarcastic after that, but um, any any questions you want to know about it? Because this right here is something I'm super proud of, um, and I want you to know about it. Whiskey, and coffee, and a whiskey glass. Coffee and a whiskey glass. Coffee in a whiskey glass. Coffee in a whiskey glass. Um, I'll show you one more thing on this before before we go. Cost, I think it's like twenty two hundred dollars uh, retail price, and you can get it at any uh, PRS dealer on pre order. Uh, I believe the ones that are shipping out on Tuesday or that customers can pick up on Tuesday are all spoken for, but um, you will get one if you. Order. The pickups, Mr. Moore, are PRS designed. Paul and I went super, super, super deep uh, into what we love about single coil pickups and what we don't. And what makes vintage single coil pickups so exciting. What, what makes it the guitar that we, so that I sort of keep gravitating towards. And he nailed it. He got it. He would call me and go, I figured it out. And we would just keep developing from there. So these are the PRS 635 JM, and that's a pickup that's uh, sort of between a 63 and a 64. The neck is sort of between a 63. I wish that you could feel a neck uh, through Instagram, because you pick it up and you go, oh, it's sporty, but it's big enough to be able to play on. And um, I think the neck is my favorite part of the guitar. You, anybody who picks the neck goes, oh man. Um, and they all, 100 out of 100, will feel like that. That's what's really cool. Um, it's, I don't know how much it weighs, but it's fairly light. Um, it's on the lighter side. It's not really heavy, which is great. It might have something to do with maybe missing some here. Um, you know, whenever you have a guitar. Also, there's no screws on the back plate, as I have had on all my guitars, because why would you put a piece of plastic over where you need to change the strings 
uh, that's a design thing I don't want to be involved in and saying, you've got to take six small screws off to change a guitar string. Um, so it just doesn't happen. Um, so I want to show you, you know, everyone's already uh, picking it up and, and, and when they're in music stores and stuff, you can't play loud. It's, and, they're, and they're also trying to get a lot out at once. Uh, so I'm just going to play for a minute, zone out. And when I lose the thread, we'll say, um, we'll say goodbye, unless there's other questions. Marry your guitar, check with your local uh, legislator about that. Um, no stairway to heaven. I don't really know stairway to heaven. Uh, the biggest difference between this and my Fender Signature Strat. Well, this was designed from the ground up. Every piece on the guitar is from a new tool that was built to, to, to make that part. So, like, the knobs, um, aren't the sort of notched. They're almost like a, like a diamond cut. Um, you don't need the names of the things here. You just, you know what they are. Also, the knobs have zero on them because theoretically, when they're off, they're at zero. Actually, technically, when they're off as well, they're at zero. Um, I even want to put at some point like heat stamp dots on, on the pick guard because it, it still seems strange to me that you have a knob with numbers on it, but you don't have a point on the pick guard as a point of reference, so I, you just sort of eyeball it. But if there were, I don't know, maybe at some point we'll do these dots where you can actually turn it and go, oh yeah, when three lines up with the dot, you're at three. You sort of, you really have to pick your own place, I guess, on the pick guard when you do it. Will more colors ever be available for it? I would say in the future, that is uh, very, very likely. Uh, maple fretboard in the future, that's also very likely depending on how much people care and want the guitar, and it feels like they really do, and they do. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I have some trouble low.
That's the bridge. I'll show you, it's just, as you're seeing, it's hyper expressive. You know, people, when they have a minute on Instagram to play something, they're going to play the things that I do as well. They come off the top of your head. But when you really sit with a guitar... <laughs> Thanks for just being on the ride with me. I really appreciate it. I'll see you later.